as you all know, BLSF fuels with the sulfur limitation of 0 0.5 is going to be the fuel which will be used after 1-1-2020. Many companies are already starting to use this fuel so that they gain experience in using it, facing the problems and finding solutions. Equally eagerly, suppliers are also supplying this fuel and uh, they are looking forward to a huge market for these fuels and they are getting customers to try out the fuel and uh, find out if this suits them. Now, neither party, the supplier nor the user, can really go ahead unless a reputable, reliable lab like Vishwa can carry out the various tests and advise them about the pros and cons of the usage of this fuel. In addition to this, the blending of the fuel, almost every fuel that is going to come into the market will be a blended fuel. So what is the best blend? The best blend is one that meets the specification and also it costs minimum for the supplier. So the supplier or the wholesaler or the distributor, whatever you may say, they have multiple fuels and multiple tanks. They would like to blend it in a, such a way that the final product meets the specifications without any problem and also does not pose any problems in the usage and with respect to the running of the machinery. For this, they come to us almost every, I would not say every, but a major, major uh, number of fuel suppliers have come to Vishwa to have their blends tested and get our expert advice on how to handle the problems. Now, in this presentation, I will not go into the properties of the fuel, VLSFO fuels, uh, which is a separate topic by itself. But I will mention that these VLSFO fuels are obtained from two sources. One, paraffinic sources, which will be more like a distillate fuel. And the other one is aromatic sources, which is more like the uh, uh, heavy fuels. But both of them are combined and they come under the uh, quality, uh, uh, quality classification of RMB 80. Now, because there are variations, quite wide variations in the, in the parametric values of this fuel, depending upon where it is sourced from, S there are lot of problems that are anticipated. IMO itself has published a detailed uh, guideline on what these problems are and what could be there uh, and so on. Now, in this presentation, I will go over those fuel properties which are likely to cause problems. What will be the consequence of these problems? Of course, our strength, the Vishwa strength is to find solutions which will not be covered in this talk. 
the stock will confine itself to fuel properties and what is wrong, what could go wrong and what is the consequence of this going wrong. So let's take one by one. First is stability. Stability is the ability of the fuel to be stable. Instability is due to sludging or asphaltine precipitation. So if this happens in a fuel, there will be accumulation of sludge in storage tank, piping system, centrifuge and filters. Then filters choke, purifiers choke and it, it creates a huge problem which may necessitate stopping the engine. The next one is compatibility. It's the most complicated problem because even a single big oil company says if you buy VLSFO from me in Singapore and you mix it with the same VLSFO fuel in Australia, I cannot guarantee that the two will be compatible. We already have an experience with ultra low sulfur fuel where even a 2% mixing with another fuel could cause instability or the fuels will not be uh, compatible. So when if, they, if they are not compatible, the result of course is that there will be precipitation of asphaltine and the choking of filters and purifiers and so on. Now, the, there are some rough methods to check the compatibility. One of them known very well is if the two fuels which are mixed have the density and viscosity within very close range, you should not be experiencing any compatibility problems. But there are many, many other ways and there are some huge problems with compatibility because uh, many of the VLSFO fuels have got very low asphaltine level. In spite of that, the drop test may show a ring and this should not be considered as a positive for incompatibility. It's a false positive because the paraffinic content in the fuel consists of light paraffins and heavy paraffins. As soon as the fuel is dropped on the filter paper, the light one immediately percolates through the filter paper. The heavy one cannot travel that fast and it stops somewhere. So where the heavy waxy substance stops, there is a ring formed. But this ring it does not represent incompatibility because this fuel does not have asphaltine. How to deal with, say, less than 0.2% asphaltine, less than 0.5% asphaltine and so on and so forth. There are several instruments, Porla, Rofa and others, which are supposed to give you a correct indication if two fuels are compatible. This is a separate topic which will be, uh, which will be discussed in, in another presentation. The third property is cold flow properties. If there is high pore point or high cloud point or wax appearance temp temperature, then it indicates that there could be blocking of filters due to wax crystallization. The fuel flow rate will be reduced. There could be deposits in the tanks and in the heat exchanger. The next one, the fourth one is acid number. The high acid number 
could be due to strong acid which is which is supposed to be zero and nothing more than zero because it will result in serious damage to marine diesel engine. Strong acids are about thousand times more acidic than weak acids which are organic acids. Most strong acids are inorganic acids. Then you have flash point. It's possible that there is a low flash point which means less than 60. You must remember that th there is no way that a flash point of less than 60.0 will be permitted on a ship. This is part of the safety construction certification of the vessel, SOLAS. So there are no concessions available. You cannot call in the ISO 4259 to give you some leeway in the flash point values. It's just not allowed. It, and the result is, if the flash point is lower on a ship, there is a risk of explosion where the gases accumulate at the top of the tank and they come in contact with the hot spot. <coughs> the next one is the ignition and combustion properties. This could come more from the aromatic sources for the VLSFO fuels. Now, this poor ignition and combustion properties can, can <coughs> deposit soot an unburned fuel in combustion chamber, exhaust valve, and turbocharger system. It can expose cylinder liner to high temperature, disrupting the lubrication film, which leads to increased wear and scuffing. This is a big problem. This can be identified quickly and uh, solutions can be provided, which will be done separately. Then we are finding a number of these VLSO4 fuels have high catfine content. The average catfine globally is about 20 ppm. Some of these are having 37, 40, 42 ppm of catfines. Of course, the limit is 60, but if the catfine content is 40 and if the purifier efficiency is not good, then 20 ppm of catfines will enter the engine and cause damage. Most engine makers are asking for a 15 ppm limit and they are, in some cases, they are going to even 10 ppm limit of catfines. Cat fines in the cylinder, abrasive wear of cylinder liners, piston ring, then the entire fuel pump and fuel injection system will suffer high wear rate. Then there are unusual components. By this we mean adulteration and contamination of the fuel with chemical contaminants such as polymers, polymethacrylates, phenols, tal oils, chlorinated hydrocarbons, Estonian shale oil, organic acids, all these are related to blending the cutter stock because the supplier is all the time looking for a price advantage by using lower and lower cost cutter stocks. This results in filter blocking, pump sticking, fuel pump sticking, fuel pump seizures and in some cases excessive separator sludging. In some cases where the tal oil which gives rise to abetic acid is present, the fuel pump and plunger are so totally frozen and they cannot even be separated. If this happens in an engine while it is running, the engine comes to a stop and there is nothing you can do and the ship will be 
starting to drift and if it is a heavy traffic area there is a high risk of collision. There are solutions to this which will be offered separately. Now on viscosity the main concern is low viscosity. That is we are looking at 3 centistokes and 2 centistokes. At, at that level the oil film is broken down and this results in seizure of pumps and insufficient injection pressure results in difficulties during startup. If it is very low viscosity, then the gap between the plunger and barrel, a lot of diesel fuel or whatever fuel is used which is of low viscosity leaks through and not enough fuel is goes to the uh, injectors to make the engine pick up. These are various problems you can expect from BLSFO fuels. We have only listed the problems and the effect of these problems. The solutions to these are addressed in a separate presentation. This is just to give you an idea of what you may expect when you start using VLSO4 mm -hmm. fuel on a regular basis, particularly if you are using fuel which has not been uh, used before and you do not have a track record or information on the track record of the fuel but, and sometimes you are te tempted to buy them because it is being offered to you at a low price. Please be careful and uh, we wish you good luck in the usage of the new VLSO4 fuels.